Okay, this right here is what you should not do when you are fighting the Thunder Gliok. <laughs> Can't believe I did that. Anyways, with that complete humiliation over, this is going to be your battle guide for how to take on the Thunder Gliok in Tears of the Kingdom, as well as everything that you need to know about the Thunder Gliok. Let's get into it. All right, so in Tears of the Kingdom, you can find the almighty Gliok in three specific locations on your map. The first location on your map is in Hyrule Field right here in the Hyrule Coliseum. The second location is in the Alcala region near the South Alcala Plain. If for some reason you can't find this massive enemy, he is chilling on the backside of the Akala Citadel. The other location for your epic fight with the Thunder Gliok in Tears of the Kingdom is in the Farron region on your map here near Martha's Landing. The Gliok's are pretty hard to miss, but in case you don't see this one in particular in the Farron region, he's south of Heron Lake and north of the sea on a little rise to the west of where the road ends. And a pro tip for you here that's pretty random, but you want to make sure that you take a picture of the Thunder Gliox for your Hyrule Compendium. It's just in case you want to 100% this game. You, my friend, are a crazy individual, but it's okay because your boy D-Rock is just as insane and I do plan on 100%ing Tears of the Kingdom. I wonder how long it's going to take. What you guys think? The Thunder Gliok specifically does have some pretty sweet drops if you manage to defeat him. You can get the Thunder Gliok Horn, the Gliok Wing, and the Gliok Guts. At least that's what I've seen so far. The Gliok Horn and the Gliok Wing add an insane boost to a weapon's attack power and can be utilized to take down other Gliok's of different elements more efficiently. The Guts can be fused to the weapons that you have as well, but I prefer to use the Guts to cook with. Ah, the good old prep work for facing the Thunder Gliok. Now, in general, you should consider doing these things, in my opinion, as far as prep work. Number one, you want to have health restoring meals. Jeez, D-Rock. That was obvious, right? Number two, have clothes or meals that can give you elemental resistance. In this case, with the Thunder Gliok, the rubber armor would help a ton if you have the whole set, even if you have one of the pieces of the set, but it's not a deal breaker totally if you don't have them. Number three, you should try to have meals that grant bonus hearts because the Thunder Gliok and all of the Gliocks, they hit really hard. I'm pretty sure it takes at least four hearts away when you get hit. Number four, try to have a ton of arrows. Like I'm talking at least 50 arrows or more. This is going to be big because you need the arrows in order to inflict any type of damage to the Thunder Gliok right off the bat. Finding arrows in Tears of the Kingdom is not as difficult as it was in Breath of the Wild, so that's pretty sweet. I personally found 300 plus arrows just exploring Hyrule and breaking crates and taking down Bokoblin camps and just basically exploring the map. And number five, you also want to make sure that you have some pretty powerful fused weapons. Ideally, you want it to be like a Lino part, a Hinox part, or a Black Moblin part. Those are some of the strongest ones that you can get. And number six, it also doesn't hurt you to have a few fairies just in case the inevitable happens. It did with me like 30 times. And a second stamina wheel so that you can practically spam a combat mechanic, which I'm gonna talk about here pretty soon. But none of this is really necessary. It's just gonna make stuff more easy for you. Oh, and don't be like me and forget to unequip your metal weapons. Metal? plus lightning equals ouchie for Link. And hey, remember that it's dangerous to go alone. So subscribe so the journey isn't as dangerous. Because let's be honest, nobody other than Link himself wants to go into a battle alone with this Thunder Gliok. Appreciate your face. The Thunder Gliok specifically is gonna be shooting beams of lightning, and it also causes lightning explosions, which can be a real pain to deal with if you're not careful. He also does this gust move thing if you get too close, and that's gonna knock you back towards the back of the arena or wherever you're at, and it will also knock you out of the air 
if you're using your paragliders. So just make sure you're watching out for that. If for any reason you can't seem to hit the eyes on the Gliox heads, you can use the Keese eyeballs, monster part, or even the arrow Kuda wings to make your arrows homing arrows. It's pretty cool. Fuse these monster parts to your arrows before you shoot and you will always hit the target 100% <laughs> of the time as long as you have the target selected. And I'm sure you're a pro at this by now. Shooting the Thunder Gliok is sort of time-based though, so if you do take too long to knock the other heads out, the decommissioned head is going to spring back to life. It's kind of lame, I know, but it is what it is, right? It's also worth noting that your melee attacks will only damage the Thunder Gliok when you knock out all three heads and they're down and they crash to the ground. Now there is an easier way in my opinion, but I'll talk more about that here in a few. Now this goes without saying, but the stronger your bows are, the more damage you're gonna do to the Thunder Gliok and the quicker you will take him down. Once the Gliok heads do eventually fall, you're only gonna have a few seconds to rush in and deal as much damage as possible with your regular weapons. In this example, the Thunder Gliok stays in the Coliseum for the most part. I mean, he does fly high above it, super high above it, but you need to work within whatever limits the arena gives you. I feel like this is pretty important too. The Gliok is going to start to hunt for you when you hide as well. So any safe place you find is only going to be safe for a few seconds at most. Now, the biggest takeaway in this video is this. Get as high as you can. This is gonna help you so much since you can slow down time while you fire off some arrows and take care of the heads without having to worry about beams of lightning. This is where the extra stamina wheel would help you out. Another idea here is to use some Zonai spring devices or platforms with balloons. Those are just a couple of excellent ways to get airborne with ease. That being said, probably the most easiest way is just attaching a rocket to your shield via fuse. Link is then gonna fly up into the air when you press the shield button, which is way faster, <laughs> hilarious to me, and less fiddly than using springs, but you do use the rocket ASAP and it does disappear pretty quickly. Now, if you are running short on rockets, simply go to the Sky Island here and stock up on some in exchange for some Zonai materials. Give them to the gumball machine, whatever you call it, the dispenser, you know what I mean. <laughs> and the prize is yours. It's pretty important to know, I think, that only certain gumball machines dispense certain Zonai devices. This is notated on your map, but I do think it's pretty important to know. Another way to get in the air, at least in this example in the Colosseum, is to use your ability Ascend. The Colosseum has a ton of different levels, and it's gonna make it super easy for you to get to the exact level you want to be at to take out the Thunder Gliok. This is pretty big. There is one last way to get airborne, but you're probably not gonna like this method. Once you get the Gliok down to a certain amount of health, it's gonna start to fly extremely high in the sky and pretty much create a thunderstorm. In this storm, he creates an updraft for you to use with your paraglider in order to reach the Thunder Gliok. Now this is probably unintentional, but let's just go ahead and use it. <laughs> this way is a little more difficult because of everything going on, but once you learn the Thunder Gliok's attack patterns, you are well on your way to defeating this guy and claiming your goodies that it leaves behind. And hey, if you have not gotten the Hylian Shield yet in Tears of the Kingdom, I actually show you exactly where to get it and this video right here. And you can actually get it within the first couple hours of the game if you just do a couple things first. Much love, Sheikah Squad, be the lights. Let's go check out that Hylian Shield video right here. I'll see you over there.